Hello, welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick, we're playing Station Ears. Now today we're back at our programming workstation. We're going to be talking a bit about logic gates. Uh, well, logic gates for people who've probably used them before, but for anybody who's new to it, we just call it multi-condition testing. Now, as to date, we've been using our set commands to sort of say, if a condition is met, then we do something. Uh, well, that's fine if only one condition has to be met, but if you're in a position where you need more than one condition to be met before something happens, or either two different things could be met before something happens, uh, how do you control that? How do you mix and match these different condition sets? Now, what are logic gates? Well, there's something that's pretty simple, so simple in fact, it's something we can just do with a couple of logic chips. Now I have a, a lighter, a, a writer, which is just going to switch the light on and off, depending on the output that comes out of our compare unit here. We've got a min-max unit. We don't really have any of our logic gates in chips, which is a little bit surprising to me, but they've never quite turned up yet. But that's okay. We do have some we can use instead. Now this one is set up for a to put out the, the less value of my two switches. So they're both switched off at the moment, so the zero for switched off, so it'll return the lesser value of whatever those two are. So if they're both switched off, they're zero, both reading zero, the lesser output is zero. If I switch one of them on, the other one's still reading zero, so the lesser output is zero. If I switch the other one on, it's still zero. If I switch them both on, the lowest result of those two now is one which passes onto there and the light comes on. So that is what we refer to as an AND gate because this one and this one have to be switched on to make it work. Uh, so that one there will say, so if we have two conditions there, they both have to be satisfied. If one of them is satisfied, the result doesn't happen. If the other one only is satisfied, the result doesn't happen. It's not until they are both satisfied that the, 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 our resulting action actually happens. Uh, this will be something, you know, for example, if you have uh, a, a, summer, a greenhouse set up and you only wanted to plant between certain temperatures. So you have two conditions, one to say, is it warm enough? And one, is it cool enough? So if, say, is it above 15 degrees and is it below 50 degrees? There'll be your two questions there. So if it's 100 degrees, it'll satisfy one of those conditions. It'll be about 15, but not the other one. You don't want to be planting anything. It's not until it's in between those two that both of those conditions are satisfied that you want your automated hydroponics to start planting things. So that's one of the options we have there. The other one we have, which you'd use under different circumstances, of course, is an all or gate. Now, the way we can do this one here, just by instead of using the, the less button there, we can change that to a greater. Now, this one here is, so whichever is the highest of these two, so the moment they're both reading zero, the maximum number is zero, it's switched off. If I switch on either of these ones now, we get a true value. Or if I switch the other one on, we've now got a true value. If they're both on, it's all good. But once they're both off, it's all off. So this one here is that one or that one have to be switched on, which is surprisingly enough called an OR gate. So uh, there's the two. There's sort of other ones available. They're probably the main two you're going to use. We also have an exclusive OR gate where it would be one or the other, but not both. Um, I don't have a chip to do that, but we'll get onto that when we move over to here. Okay, here we are set up with our IC. We have our light and our two switches just hooked up to pin one, two, or zero, one, two. And here's our code. So I've just aliased up the light and the two levers into the pin slots D0, D1, D2. I've just created some, some variables just rename some of the registers to input one, input two, and our result. Just to clarify our code a little bit. You don't have to do that. It just makes it a bit easier to read though. So we start by loading 
lever 1 setting and store it in input 1. And load lever 2 setting and put it in input 2. Now our, then to combine those two results, we want to make sure both of them are true. So our command is AND. So if we look in our functions, our AND is pretty easy to find because it's right at the start. Alphabets, aren't they wonderful? Um, so it is just set the first value, which is our result, to 1 if A and B are not 0. Now just be careful with that one, it is not 0. So a negative number is still considered to be true. So it's only zeros or not zeros. Zeros are false, anything else is true. So set register 1 or the, or the first variable there to 1 if both of those are not 0. Then we just take that result and save it back to the on value for the light. So it'll switch the light on if it's true and switch it off if it's not. So that is our AND command. It is that simple. Do your two tests, combine them, and output them. So we confirm, export that. We should have a code in there. We do. Right, so they both have to be on. We have a result. Either of them off, or both off. Nope, they both have to be on. So that's the way of combining them both. Let's say if you've got multiple tests for something there, um, if your tank's not full and true, and that you've got some gas there to harvest, true, switch your pumps on or switch your filtration on. If your tank's full, but there's still gases to harvest, nope, sorry, tank's full, we don't want to be doing that. Or you've got space in the tank, but there's nothing there to actually pump, nah, no point switching it on. So that's your AND gate for when they're both hooked up. Um, right, so our next one will be a, an OR, or gate. Now, OR gate, we're down here somewhere, if I can remember me alphabet, there we go, OR. So once again, if the second or third inputs here are not zero, then the result will produce a one. So all we have to do is change that to OR, and that's it. We've changed the whole functionality of our code. Confirm, export that, one on, both on, other one on. Very simple, one or the other. That's your OR gate. Now, we do have other ones as well. The one we were talking about before, which was your exclusive OR. Once again, easy to find, X is right at the end. So it's either A or B, now either of our inputs are true, but not both. Right here, so if we change that simply to an XOR, confirm, export, switch one on, switch both on, and it's off. Other one on, other one off. Uh, now these ones, well, you've actually probably got one of these in your house, I'd, I'd almost bet at the moment. If you've got a passage which has got light switches at both end of it, you walk in one end, switch the light on, now walk out the other end of the passage, flick the light switch at the other end and flick the light off. Doesn't matter which way you go, the light always comes on no matter which light switch you use. Uh, so these ones are sort of handy if you're using things from two different locations, if you've got a control room somewhere where you want to switch a machine on, but you also want to have a switch down on the machine on the workshop floor as well, which will do the same. An XOR gate will do this thing for you. Now you also have a NOR gate, which is a neither or I guess it's called, which means that they must both be off to work. It's sort of like a backwards AND gate, I guess you can consider it to be. Um, so if both of them are switched off, the light is on. Switch either of them on, that one or that one on, the light goes off. Both off, the light's on. Okay, so here we have a little setup here. We've got a dial set up with a light and a display. The dial is set up just to write its value to the display. 
because when the dial is between the date, the uh, value range we've set up, the light will come on. So if we look at our code, we've got the similar setup. We've only used our devices, our light dial displays. We've still got our two inputs and our result aliases here. Now we've started up, we've loaded the setting from the dial into R0 and written it straight to the display. So it's easy to see what, what setting we've got it on. Now our conditions are, we've used our set, set, set greater than. So we'll set input 1 to true if R0 is greater than 15. And now we'll set input 2 to true if R0 is less than 50. So if it's between 15 and 50, it'll tr return a true result. Then we're just using the same AND com command to join the two inputs into the one result. And we'll just write that result into the, uh, the light and switch it on. So if it's between 15 and 50, there are our two conditions. They must both be satisfied because we've got an AND result there. We confirm, export. Now we can control, oops, that's down. We write it up. Once we hit 15, that's not greater than, that's 15. So 16, it should come on. And once again, our range between there, so if this was deciding when a, when you want your Harveys to plant, of course we'll be working Kelvins here, so it wouldn't be just 50. Uh, once again, we hit the 49. Once we hit the 50, it's outside of our condition range, so it switches off. So it is still greater than 15, so one of the conditions is satisfied. But it is not satisfied the other one, so they're both not satisfied, so using an AND command they will not work. Because if we were to add, say, another switch in here and say that the light must be between those two values and have this light and have the switch on, we can do that as well. Here we go. Now I've just added in a lever, added that into the device, added an input three, which will be what we read from the lever. So once again, the same code all the way down to here, we've just added in after we've got our result, but before we send it to light, we're going to load the lever setting into R0 and we're just going to compound that on with the existing result. So now the result will be the AND, the old result, and R0. So it will combine what we've just read with the result and save it back into result. And of course we pass that onto the light. Uh, so confirm, export that. Now we're between the settings, but the switch is off. So the light's off. Now the light's back on again. Once we go outside of our range, the light is off. It doesn't matter what we do, the light won't come on there. Then back up, light's on. Now of course if you change it to an OR statement with that, that would then override the switch. So if we do that, change that to an OR, so it'll say that is between the, temp the our setting range or the lever is on. So export. So now if our temperature drops, the light stays on. Switch the light, switch off, and it's overriding it. Of course, it still still stays on there because it is an OR. That one, all the dial conditions are met doesn't have to be both. So this one will switch on even when the light's off. Right now, so it depends on how you want it to operate as to which one you want. So you can use your ands and your ors in a compound statement. It doesn't have to be just all ands or all ors. Uh, so you can make from that, you can compound as many items as you like onto that. And you know, your decision tree can become as complex or as simple as you like it to be. So you can test a lot of things before something's to happen. Um, so as with your, once again, with your hydroponics here, you can test the temperature. The temperature has to be above a certain one, it has to be below a certain one. And you can check for the water and make sure there's some water there. And you can check for any toxins in there. And you can check for o CO2 in the atmosphere. And you can just combine them, combine everything together into the one output and just let your Harveys know, yep, you're good to plant, off you go. So, but that's uh, MIPS. 
logic gates. I uh, hope that comes in handy for you. That's about all we got for today. So till next time, happy building. See ya.